Hi, my name is Keenan Hardert. I'm a professor at Minnesota State University, Mankato. I primarily work in cancer research and bioeducation research. And today what we're going to be performing is a Cox proportional hazards regression survival analysis. This is a key test. It's a very advanced survival analysis that is gonna allow you to generate survival estimates, look at categorical data, most importantly, and that's gonna allow your survival curves to take on a new exploratory hypothesis generating role. So if we look at the education data that I've got here, I have all of my subjects up here. What I have is a time in days and an event, a one or zero and a one meaning that there was a failure event of some kind in the class. That can be if you get below 70% on any, any sort of assignment, anything. So the key with most regular survival data, and we've done videos to cover those with like log rank, Cox before, um, some of the other tests, some of the standard stuff, is that typically you will just have a the zero and one setup right here that you have, and you can divide them into different populations. As you can tell, we are actually in multiple variables, that section of PRISM, that, uh, that offering. What I had to do is say, in my case, to say an event versus a non-event, I had to make sure that this was categorical, not continuous for number. The same is going to happen for now. I'm going to take a bunch of variables about my students and say, here are all the stats about everyone. In this case, are they retaking the class? Did they attend more than 90%? That counts as a high. Did they, how many hours did they work per week? And low is less than 20 hours. Are they first gen or not? Did they work overnights? And did they come to four or more review sessions or office hours of some sort? So low versus high on that. The neat thing with how this is going to work is that we're going to be able to explore which one of these categories is significantly affecting our survival time and thus our failure rate. So this is a very cool advanced way to take survival data and actually make it kind of exploratory. And it will still be able, we can still make then after this a typical survival curve, but let's go ahead and go over here. So if I say analyze and I'm going to say Cox proportional hazards regression, I want to include everybody. Notably, make sure that your time and event are in A and B right here so that it auto recognizes that. You're gonna to come to this screen right here. First thing I wanna say is that for an event, I want this to say one. That's my, that's what I designated as that was a failure event of some sort. Then zero, we're gonna say censored. They're still, they're still going. So we won't get to two way interactions right now. So what we're doing with main effects is saying, I have columns of data as I already showed you retaker, attendance, do they work, all this. I'm just going to measure those variables as single variables against survival. Perfect. If I wanted to do two-way interactions, look what I add. Now we're going to say the combination of either one of those factors, how do those interact? I'm going to just keep this at main effects for now. If I have enough time in the video, I will try to do a two-way interaction. So next, you have some customization right here. What I want to do is make a reference level to all the, I'm going to call all the baseline levels, all the like the happy levels basically right here. So if you're a retaker, the reference level, you're not a retaker. That's that's the typical. Do you attend and you're a high attender? That's typical. Do you work? Low workers are typical. First gen, no, typical. Overnight snow is typical. And then reviews, I actually want to say, I want to switch that up and I want to get that to, I assume that I want this to be, Here's the high reviewers. I, I'm going to assume that that's typical. So I've got that set. Technically, I could leave this as either or, and it will spit out the opposite as what we're going to test. But in this case, I want to keep that kind of calm there. So all set predictions, compares fine. Right here in options, what I really want to do is add a p-value because this is going to give me how significant each variable is influencing that survival. I want this right here. I also want a covariance matrix. We'll see in a sec how this is going to be an incredibly important and a great way to do sort of a comparing each variable and how much it influences each other before we even do the multi. So goodness of fit and residuals, you have some other options here. But again, I'm just going to run this as is. So after we've run the Cox regression of our data, we can actually see which factors did influence, for example, if survival was affected by any of these categorical variables, right? So let's go ahead and take a look here. Your best look at which direction, quote unquote, things are moving is this section right here a little bit, the parameter kind of which is it going towards the good or the bad? Um, well, and I would say association maybe. 
So as you can tell right here, there is a larger effect with low attendance. There is a large effect with high work, things like that. We do actually have this estimate right here in a 95% confidence interval as well. But the walled statistic right here is not technically a normal Z-score. This is actually just saying basically what is the like ratio of the estimated regression coefficient to its standard error. This is how we are going to determine significance in here. And this, these p-values can be trusted because essentially they, they are adjusted for the other terms in the model. And that's going to be what we kind of have here. Now, interestingly enough, and maybe to no surprise, being a low attendance category person is highly significantly associated with not doing well and having a failure event in this case happen very quickly. Being a high 20 hours a week working person also was not favorable. It was significantly poor in this case. So going on through here, we definitely have um, some great stats that can take you through kind of the, you know, again, really extrapolating what was survival stats based on categorical variables into something a little more actionable. And one of the best ways that I like using these is again to, even if you just want to make a bar graph with all of your categories and then do a minus log to the 10, oh, sorry, of your p-value and then note like, hey, these were my most significant factors in terms of ascension and effect on this, on this cycle. So hopefully that sets us up pretty well and we should be all set. Parameter covariance, this is the graph that I wanted to show off right here. So for each one of these beta values, these are our values that you just saw. We have a wonderful correlation matrix right here that shows us exactly which factors are influencing the others. Notably, it will begin with just these values right here. So if you want to go to your resources right here and your results, go to the parameter covariance tab that we ordered up right here. This is actually going to, I think this, yeah, I got to move this little guy right here quick. Sorry. This little, this little guy right here will actually just label it for you automatically. So now what I can do is say, ooh, that's a pretty big, significant correlation right here with beta six. So if you don't go to the reviews, beta two, you're a low attender too. And then beta three, you're a worker too. Dang it. So what this is telling me is like, if you work high hours or you attend very little, you're also probably not going to attend um, any of the reviews either. So this is a really nice way to set up and explore your data that starts out really heavy with categories, but you're going to be able to analyze and go really advanced here. So this is a great feature for exploring data, but also really showing significance for specific categories that, you know, your paper, your project is more interested in, in that case. So thank you for joining us today. 